सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री वी कंप्लीटेड मॉड्यूल वन एंड वी स्टार्टेड विद द एक्सरसाइज प्रैक्टिकल एक्सरसाइज ऑफ सींग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ एंड वी डिड द फर्स्ट थ्री स्टेप्स इन दैट देन वी मूव ऑन टू मॉड्यूल टू and lecture 7 about right understanding is what we were talking about so this whole uhv3 we'll be doing the lectures and interspersed with that will be the steps of the exercises so once we finish the lecture 7 and 8 we'll go back to the next couple of steps in the exercise and so on so we had been saying that as we awaken to the higher activities within us we are able to see this existence in a slightly different light when we see just through the body through the eyes what we see we are largely focused on the form and at most when we think and analyze a little bit we gather something about the property the effect of that unit on another unit but beyond that we are not able to see and in this case what we see in the form and the property there is lot of variety there is lot of change if you see the trees outside you know the leaves are of one type when the you know fresh leaves of the season come then those leaves change in color as time goes and when the season changes and there is autumn the leaves are to fall you see a different change so like that you will see the form keeps changing just like if you see the human body the form keeps changing as you are growing as you are aging the form can keep changing the property also at different times may be different so you eat a fruit you eat a banana in the morning it has some impact on the human body the impact of one unit on another unit that same banana you eat at night it will have a different impact on the body now it will not be so beneficial for the body as it was in the morning the property of that unit the impact of that unit on the other unit has changed so you will find that the form and the property are linked with time and so they keep changing but as we awaken to the higher activities within us we are able to see another part in this existence which is unchanging which is continuous which is definite and which is universal so what is that part so we talked about that and we said you know there is if you awaken to the activity of contemplation within yourself you are able to see the participation that every unit has with every other unit what we call the natural characteristic it naturally every unit relates to every other unit or you can say sees its relationship and participates in that relationship so for instance in the human body you can see that we have so many cells in the human body now these come together to form tissues they are participating in the slightly larger unit the tissue they are each doing their own activity activities are going on within each cell and all these cells put together are forming a tissue so they are working for the good of the tissue then if you look at the tissue the tissue has all these cells and many of these tissues come together and they form organs now they are functioning in the interest of the organ so you have you know you may have slight variation 
in the in the cells but at the base they are all working towards the benefit of that organ and if you put all these organs together in the body and you see these organs form organ systems so like you have the heart you now with it if you look at the organ system involved the heart is um, linked with the blood vessels the arteries the veins the circulatory system and now you see that all those tiny cells which formed the heart muscle and then together formed the heart and all of that now along with the cells in the circulatory system they are doing a certain function so like that you see for every organ every organ system every cell is participating in its activity with every other cell for the larger good of the body as a whole so it's taking care of all of those things they are participating together so that the body can function as a whole and in this manner you will see everything in the existence every unit in the existence is working like this it is participating coming together in the larger and larger and larger scheme of things and doing its part even if you see the body now when the body dies it decays what happens it disintegrates it goes back to the soil we say so whatever the particles whatever was there in the body now it is again back to the nature and again it is participating in the nature so all of this you know is happening and you are able to see this participation and of course when you see the participation of every unit with every other unit you also start contemplating about your participation what is my participation in this existence similarly when you awaken to the activity of understanding you start seeing this self organization the innateness that is there in every unit so for instance we said for the plant it exists and it grows every plant you see it grows there is no such plant that doesn't grow every plant in nature is growing you can't separate that if you cut the plant now the cut part stops growing but now you can see that it is no longer a part of that plant it has been cut you see the changes the decomposition those kind of changes that are happening and you can see that now it is part of the physical order so like that you will see that every order this classification into the orders has been done based on all of these very distinct characteristics so it is innate for the plant to grow but a cut plant doesn't grow it is part of the physical order now the physical order there is no growth but it is innate to the physical order to exist so it exists the form may change but it exists similarly we see that in the case of the animal body and the human body there is similarity to the plant body so it exists and it grows this is true of animal body also this is true of human body also but as we are going towards the so called higher orders we find that the complexity is increasing so in the plant you don't find so much detail of organs and organ systems and brain and this and that in the animal body you find more complexity so the animal body has all these organ systems and has a brain and all that when you come to the human body it is more complex it has more of a you know a varied structure and so on 
but essentially those characteristics that are innate to the plant body are also seen in the animal body and in the human body therefore you can see that the similarity between them however in the when you look at the innateness now you also have to consider another unit once you think of the animal and the human being now you have to consider one more unit and that is the consciousness unit so it's not just the body but in association with the body now there is a consciousness unit so this consciousness unit is the one that has the will to live and this consciousness unit can be associated with an animal body it can be associated with a human body depending on the development of the cell how far progressed it is it chooses to associate either with an animal body or with a human body and in the human body also you will see though there is potential to know of course there is a will to live and there is a will to live with happiness in continuity that is there in all human cells there is also a potential to actually live with happiness in continuity only thing is some human beings may have realized that potential some human beings may not have realized that potential so in that way there is a difference in the cells but the potential is the same in every human being this potential to know to understand this is not there in animals so that's why when the self becomes a little more evolved it looks to associate with the human body it seeks to associate with the human body so that it can go further in its evolution and its development now you see this is all going on you are not doing anything we are not doing anything for it we happen to be there what did we do for our existence you see we didn't do anything we are just there we already have this will to live with continuous happiness that is innate in us that is already part of our self organization you can't change that in fact you find you don't want to change it you do want to live with continuous happiness there is no self who will want to live without happiness there may be many who are not happy so we don't have the competence perhaps but you will not find any self who doesn't want to be happy in continuous so then when you understand the units in existence you find there is a certain self organization in every unit in this existence and then when we awaken to the activity of realization the highest activity within the self then we are able to see the subtlest reality of all and that is the space and when we are able to see that we will be able to see that this subtlest reality the space is the one that is the foundation is the basis is what in which all these units are submerged and now it all clicks in place that this is how we are already related i may not have seen it earlier but as i awaken to the higher activities i am able to see more and more clearly that this relationship is already there this innateness this natural characteristic of participation of the units is already there now i understand how everything is interconnected and how i have a definite role in this existence so we looked at this you know our participation once i understand the existence you know once i understand the self 
as I awaken to the higher activities within the self and I understand myself better, I am able to understand the existence better. When I am able to understand the existence better, I am able to see the inherent harmony that is there and I am able to see that what is my role? How do I have to live with this? What is my participation? So with the physical order, I facilitate its existence. Because that is, you know, innate to it. It just exists. So I ensure a conducive environment so that it is not getting destroyed, it is existing. And I ensure its constitution. So like we took the example of the constitution of the earth the constitution of rocks, and so on. Because now you understand that everything has a role, every unit has a role. So every unit is playing its part. And if I understand that, I will live accordingly. Similarly with the bio-order, I can see that what is innate to the bio-order is growth. So I will try to have a conducive environment so that the plants and trees can grow. And in fact, if we see, without the human being tampering, they were doing a very good job. When the human being started tampering, we created a lot of imbalances. And then to try to, you know, when we realize that we are creating so much imbalance, then we tried to replenish things, correct things. So people tried to, um, you know, plant trees and so on. And then we had all these, save the forest, save the rivers, save the soil. In fact, if we had not interfered, there was no need to save anything because it was already flourishing. It is when we didn't understand and we tampered with it that this imbalance happened. But now also if we understand the units better, if we understand the nature better, if we are understand ourselves better, then we can see what is our role and work towards that. So facilitate the growth of the plants, facilitate the seed, maintain the seed, ensure the seed so that all these different varieties of plants that we have, they don't become extinct. We continue to see those. In the animal order, we can see that we can facilitate the care of the body. So we can ensure physical facility, we can ensure the environment for the existence and growth of the body. But there is not just the body, there is also the self. So we can try to ensure the will to live that is there in every animal self. And we can try to ensure the breed so that it continues the same way generation after generation. Not just in my generation, but in the generation of my children, grandchildren and so on. And if we look at the human being, again the body has the similar characteristics of growth, existence. So I will facilitate the care of the body by trying to ensure the physical facility and the environment necessary for existence and growth of the body. But when it comes to the self, I will also try to facilitate the will of the self to live with continuous happiness. And how we can do that is by ensuring human education and sanskar. So now I start seeing my participation in developing, in maintaining this, in continuing with this human education and sanskar, so that ultimately there is an undivided society. We have the systems in place working for the good of entire humanity along with nature and existence. So there is a universal human order. So it seems like a very big task and very major thing, but you can see how 
when i see that every cell it's doing its part in every unit in this existence then what is stopping me from doing my part playing my role without worrying about how things are going wrong if all of us if all units start working you know for the larger good of the you know the larger whole the bigger picture then all those systems that are not right will fall in place because we will be seeing our participation in larger and larger and larger units in larger orders so we will move in that direction so we spoke of this when we are talking about the rest of nature what will we do we will preserve the nature preservation means we will be taking care of enrichment of nature protection of nature and right utilization of it and that is going to lead to not only my prosperity enabling my prosperity because without that without the nature being enriched my prosperity also may be in danger at some point and of course with that when i am enriching or helping to preserve the nature then the nature also there is fulfillment so what do i do i protect the innateness of all these orders in nature i protect and enrich the inheritance i rightly utilize the things in line with their activity at least i don't violate any of these things if i just leave it alone also it will flourish on its own it's only when i don't understand that i interfere with it next slide please so we talked about this participation our participation with the physical order with the soil with the water with the air then i don't you know like if the water is there now water has a certain role to play it is significant it is there in entire nature and it is doing its part it is flowing in certain ways but when i don't understand this i do things like you know what do they call it taking over the what reclaiming the land and something something so you you know people are doing that um so the water bodies are shrinking and more and more houses and all kinds of things are being built now is there a need for that do we really need to do that is there a need for making all these changes or do we already have sufficient so we may not be seeing all this we may not be seeing our role clearly but at least let it exist in the way it is so that it is there for future generations with the bio order with the plants with the trees so nature and you know, nurture its innateness so it can grow so even in the forests when we don't do anything it grows but now when we put all kinds of harmful chemicals for getting more and more um harvest from them now it's not nourishing for the plant it is not um nurturing for the plants and at the same time it is harming the human body also but we don't see the connection so many times now there is more awareness and we are trying to do things you know make things right with organic farming and natural farming and you will find that all of these um answers are available in the existence we just have to look those possibilities are there we don't have to create something new new we don't have to make new chemicals to um 
fertilize the land and you know to do all kinds of things to the land so that we can grow more we have changed the seed of the wheat so that the wheat that used to harvest in 5 to 6 months now takes only 3 months to harvest so you are harvesting double the amount of wheat but how much damage is it causing what has the seed done if you see so much damage is happening that same wheat that used to nurture the body now it is causing acidity in the body it is causing problems for many people who are not able to digest and when we don't understand we say it is gluten insensitivity uh, or gluten sensitivity or allergy to gluten this is not allergy to gluten we have tampered with things and the results are here for us to see and so our answer to that is let's you know use millets let's use other things but again if we don't understand the whole process then we will tamper with that also we'll tamper with that seed also so you see how important it is to have this understanding and to live with that ensuring the inheritance the seed of these plants because ultimately it is going to be damaging for us only and of course the rest of nature is getting damaged with that when it comes to the animal order to protect the innateness the will to live of the animals of the birds so not to interfere with the forest let there be some place for these animals to survive to to live and ensure the inheritance the breed of these animals so we spoke about the breed of the cow for instance and so on in the human order in the human being protect the innateness the will to live with continuous happiness so try to make such systems so that there can be you know right understanding becomes a possibility something that availability is there for every child to be able to at least have that opportunity in their life and to ensure the inheritance generation after generation by having this process of education and sanskar continue throughout not just for us but for our children for grandchildren and future generations so all this we discussed and then we were reflecting on some things and we said for any unit we can try to articulate its form its property that means its impact on any other unit say the human body its natural characteristic in in its innateness and its coexistence and also we talked about or at least we put in the assignment that we can reflect on our participation with every order what exactly we are doing what is our participation with the physical facility that we are using are we aware of it with the bio order with the vegetables and fruits that we eat how are we participating with the plants that provide these with the animal order like with birds with other animals what is our participation with our neighborhood other human beings in our neighborhood what is our participation are we able to fulfill it so these were some thoughts some reflections that we were discussing yesterday we can take some observations discussion before we go further namaste didi <coughs> namaste to everybody yes so i don't know how to articulate this but uh, i'll try my best uh, though yesterday somebody did take up this question as to how i mean this is such a large uh, with the governance like how the governance and policies of a country take over for example the seeds and the cow that you know you mentioned as an example so we know i mean not that we know uh, there is a study and how the seeds were taken over that means the native seeds have been taken over and then uh, substituted by the gmo seeds 
wherein the example of wheat and you know even mustard and brinjal and so many things that are being tampered with or papaya like you mentioned also so i do i have the knowledge i mean i know about this but i feel somehow very dropped or very crushed under the whole system as to what will be my role and participation though um, with like <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> like with education and sanskar we can educate people about it you know like through this only for example we getting to know that wheat that you mentioned is not gluten is not the problem it is what is being tampered with is the problem <laughs> and also because uh, there is so much of uh, you know uh, pesticides and <clears throat> like the farmers knew how to fertilize their land through jeevamrit and cow you know cow dung and they made their own fertilizers and you know which they didn't use artificial uh, urea and all the question is like i said i said what is the participation at the individual level to such a yeah. large uh, conspiracy or whatever is going on you know like all over it's not just in my country it's all over the planet so what is my participation here yeah so you see that everywhere that you look it's like looking at a glass which has you know which is half full of water either i can look at what is empty and worry about it and get overwhelmed with it or i can look at what is full and start from there so i can see what is going right <clears throat> there are many people who are working for the good of the land for the good of other human beings society hmm? many people are doing lot of good work also it's not that only bad things are happening and systems are everything is bad you will see that you do want to do right and you know help others to do right that is also innate it's part of human nature to help others how you do it depends on your understanding like i said if i don't understand things the person who is making the gmo things it's may not be doing it like a conspiracy may also be doing it with a good intention that you know this will help in some way or if somebody doesn't have the understanding they may assume that this is going to be making me happy and so therefore let me do this without really understanding the consequences of what they are doing so you will find what is basically lacking where all this is happening is the lack of understanding this is what is leading to the problem isn't it yes i mean to come back and think of it how many of us were taught any of this in our schools we've been through so many years of education right yes. right from all our childhood kindergarten all that school high school college university higher education everything where are we talking about any of this yes so we don't know it we don't understand it so all we are talking about is higher pay packages getting a good job living a life of luxury and so on so children who are growing up are also growing up with that that this is what i need to do this is what is right to do and there is no thought otherwise we are constantly looking outward and this is multiplying whatever we are seeing out outside we are trying to accomplish only that and so these people are teaching their children the same thing and so this is going forward in that direction so it hasn't happened overnight the change it has taken lot of time and it is slowly happening but the good thing that i see in this is the positivity that now there is awareness see how many people are talking about natural farming about yeah. you know organic growing about organic products you see so many stores that are selling organic products why is it because people are becoming more aware that this is not right this is not having the right impact 
somewhere we need to make some changes so many people are like i said are doing many good things in society we just have to look around and we will see that there are many people doing many many roles even this what we are doing now this is an effort to increase the human education and sanskar make it available for all it's just it has to go in steps it won't suddenly take over the entire education but it's happening and it's happening at a faster pace in fact than you know what we could all imagine like it seems like so huge a task and we are so small in this but each person doing their part now you see all these workshops that are happening they are happening you know in mm-hmm. a very self organized way nobody is reminding anybody that you have to come in time for you have a session at such and such time everybody is doing their stuff every morning before i come to talk somebody has turned on the zoom you know there are people who are committed all of these are volunteers they are doing it out of their free will their choice they are not getting anything out of it there is no physical facility being given there is no other motivation other than the happiness it gives to you you see right. so right. all of the volunteer effort is happening on a very large scale to have so many workshops running monday to friday week after week after week for years without a break that itself is a very significant thing isn't it yes and it is helping people to understand not to say that everybody will understand but at least it is available and as it becomes available to more and more and more people more and more children as they grow even if a small percentage of them are able to understand this and are able to participate that makes a huge difference these children are going to be tomorrow's policy makers right that can change the whole system overnight isn't it so it's mm-hmm. happening i just have to look around and find what i need to do to participate isn't right it? yes so we all have a role no matter how small a work we may be doing but we are <coughs> we have the ability to participate and if we understand our participation if we understand the significance of it we will find a way the right. good thing here is nobody is leaving their job leaving their physical facility you see everybody who is participating in this effort of the education sanskar part this you know the workshops and the all this process that is happening with aict now it was with aict now you can see it is you know broadening into school education and so many other parts now it is going in mp it is there and so on so all this is slowly growing with the help of volunteers <laughs> as more volunteers come on board as more people see their role this can grow by leaps and bounds i agree yes i agree however i mean yes you're right and i i do feel that my small participation is that as a parent i have a channeled you know my this in i mean something which was also the innateness into my children and you know maybe uh, they and and of course they've chosen a life path which is also sustainable and you know all of that but i feel i personally personally you know as my doing is i feel very constricted and of course i have just got uh, attached to uh, you you know uhv and i am on i'll i'll be taking it forward and i would be also participating in you know like i mean that's my, at least my wish i hope i can do it in a proper way and the right way so see all we need to do is to have that wish to be to have that desire and to be able to work towards it the rest will fall in place so we don't right. have to become perfect we don't have to wait till we realize and understand everything in the existence wherever we are from whichever place we are we can see that there is somebody who knows less than us and we can participate in that 
Right, Didi. That's so true. Yeah. Yes. And even as volunteers, whoever is coming on board, not that they already know things, but there are others who have been volunteering from before. So they are there to guide. There is always somebody there to guide, and people are doing on their own steam. So if mm-hmm. I am working in a college and I am, you know, I have only certain amount of time. I have family life. I have college. I have my, you know, the needs of the family and so many things. Considering all that, I give my availability that I am available this, 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 this time, and I can do, you know. Whatever needs to be done at that time. Now, depending on my competence level, whatever I need, you know, whatever I think I can do, whatever skill I have, based on that, I can participate. Right. There is no strain. There is no tension. There is no force applied. So it is just in a very self-organized, smooth manner that this can happen, and that. Right. that's the only way to sustain it if you use force right or you know some physical kind of motivation it can only go so far ultimately it has to come from within that yeah that's true understanding the need yeah absolutely that's so true just go with the flow and your own uh, competence and your own intention that's so true yes yes didi thank you thank you namaste dede namaste i'm on and off because i came back from kanpur and i'm a little occupied with kids but uh, otherwise uh, everything is going good in that reference but i just wanted to ask a simple question as in uh, let's assume this uh, whatever is being said is is 100% right and there is a resistance which is 10000% imposed in the form of advertisements in the form of society in the form of however wherever whatever is happening how would we control our resistance it and and still keep a disciplined because we have to take a firm stance in trying to do some things because i have two young kids and i am facing a challenge in terms of that of keeping in discipline and also resistance and also being natural uh, it, it appears these are all contradictory but maybe i am in the initial phase of understanding so i wish your guidance to uh to see how to really overcome that phase yeah so if you see you know there is nothing contradictory in all of this there is nothing to control see when we are trying to forcefully do something it is lot of pressure seems very difficult may not be able to do and so on but here there is no no control like that you just see what is right and move in that direction so even if it is children right now we talk of natural acceptance you are familiar with natural acceptance yes yeah so this you know capacity is there in everybody we just have to refer to it we don't refer to it enough right. so when we refer to our natural acceptance we are able to see our role our participation we are able to see you know what is right and move in that direction so also our children even small children if we put things across in a language they understand we don't use big words we don't say evolution of self and things like that but we try to give them small examples we right. ask them what is naturally acceptable to them simple thing right. a child may say a child eats junk food or a child plays with the cell phone when it's time to study they are playing with the phone small mm-hmm. thing right? right now one way can be i tell them you better eat this you know i'm telling you it is good for you you better eat it right and i don't give any other choice right you do it because i say so right and the phone is not meant for you you are supposed this is study time put away the phone this right. is one right 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 it may or may not work it may work out of fear for some time but as the child grows the body grows you know the child may be able to see that they can do many things and now whatever fear there was 
that fear is not there in them right they can overpower that they can overpower the body also right and they can do what they want right so forcing somebody or disciplining like this from outside so that the behavior changes that may not work or it may not work for long or it may work even out of fear it may work as long as we are sitting on their head literally right right but when they are away from us it will not happen in a self disciplined manner so it has to be self discipline how would it be self discipline you you know give them the choices and let them choose based on their own natural acceptance get them used to referring to their natural acceptance and you will find that 99.9% of the time they choose the right thing and for that 0.1% or whatever you are there to guide them but during this process they would irritate so much that we couldn't really argue because they would counter argue and all of this it's happens so thing. when we don't understand then we think that the problem is with them problem is with our competence actually i can tell you i mean before uhv much before that i'm talking of years and years back right 25 years back i was you know when the children were small right i used to talk to them give them the choices if you give them the you know choices and ask them to choose they will make the right choice but we don't think that they can do that so we don't even you know we don't even consider it so you ask a child you know see this is harmful for the body this is nurturing for the body you make your choice what do you want to do you want to nurture the body you want to harm the body every child will tell you they want to nurture the body occasionally they may make a small mistake here and there but you allow that but you allow them to you know use their own um this within the self you know their their um, to be able to refer to their own natural acceptance and find their path they can do it we can guide them for things that they don't know but we tend to impose things on them that's where the problem comes and then when they you know we try to convince them this is how it is you have to do it like this and there will always be a counter argument you know logically you would keep trying to do many things you know it may not work you see it in you know any example also somebody right. is going on arguing with you something and you keep insisting no this is how it is the other person will also keep insisting that is not how it is but you allow them just give it as a proposal allow them to reflect on it and say your choice now you see the difference there will be a difference Uh, so fair the, enough. I, uh, just a small additional question, uh, if I may ask. You could take it or not. I uh, just put forward a question. Yeah. So uh, I have enrolled them into a karate session, and uh, it's a very rigorous training for one or one and a half hour, where the physical fitness is put to a test. And uh, fortunately, I have joined just to be sure. In the, in an age of forty seven, where my physical fitness is put to a test, and I could really sense what they go through. But to transform the body, you have to go through it. Uh, so. It, there is a competition between us in the sense of uh, body and the self to do it or not to do it where doing it is good but doing while doing it the physical pain is unbearable kind of a thing and there are small kids who are doing it and maybe it's not for the big ones to really do it because of the age and the physical yeah, fatigue and all of that the question is if we have to follow a discipline it has to be done in the same way as it is to be done irrespective of being natural or unnatural so how do we assess the natural acceptance against the betterment of it because somebody has already has seen the natural acceptance in that form do we go by it or we choose we have another to understand option? what exactly is natural acceptance and we have to understand that there is no competition here in the nature it is our way of looking at it because we are conditioned in that manner and we try to force our way through something that we think this is the only way this is the right way and we push through but 
if you see you know what is it that you are trying to achieve at the end of it what is it that you want you want to keep the body healthy why do you want to keep the body healthy what is your purpose here if you try to you know tease out all this you will find that many a thing we are doing based on our own conditioning right so people run marathons and all i'm not saying it's right or wrong i'm just saying you know you have to respect that you know you have to understand the body the self and everything that is around you only right. when you understand things properly then you find okay what is my role here do i need to run that marathon or do i need to because everybody has those same 24 hours in right. a day right how you utilize that time is based on what you understand is significant in life isn't it right so for somebody else it may be you know the participation yes you need to keep the body healthy there are many ways to keep the body healthy so if you look at the the how to do part right what to do outside how to do it if you look at that there may be lot of variety but at the base what is the foundation that foundation if it is understanding i have clarity about what exactly i want so for somebody who is you know very looking at just the looks of the body they may want a six pack so they may want to go to the gym every single day and work out and spend long hours doing it you know straining the body maybe having injuries but at the same time pushing to it to do it but end of the day what are we doing it for that question we must ask what is the benefit of that if it is just to maintain the looks of the body how has that served any purpose hmm? so like that we have to look at everything that we do not that we look at every single thing that we do and try to see what is right what is wrong but if we have a basic understanding if we understand you know if things are clear at the base then everything every activity we do is a reflection of that then there is no control there is no force there is no discipline things are self organized but we can have this discussion another time Let's thank you not, yeah yep thank you yeah <clears throat> ma'am actually uh, we are telling we should have the feelings of trust respect etc towards human beings uh, but we ne never uh, say in the in the course that we should feel we should have these feelings towards the other units of nature also actually we should have the, the same feeling towards other units of nature also no? because our origin is from uh, this you know, for example earth we should have uh, gratitude towards her like that uh, or trust we should uh, uh, trust the entire system you know? so we need not fear about so much fear is created um, regarding the uh, so the um, then the way the uh, nature may behave like that that we fear is created in uh, so And that should... fear is created because of lack of understanding if i understand the definiteness in nature i don't have any fear isn't it yeah um, anyway I say, you know my participation this is a reflection of my feeling towards nature so the expression of the feeling will be different isn't it uh, yeah, yes ma'am but we are specifically mentioning the feelings towards human beings but why we are not mentioning those feelings towards other units of nature we should okay. have we should have those feelings towards the other because that is a more uh, more basic you no know? origin our more or less this is part of nature these are all different orders in nature yeah so understanding the orders the ah. expression of my feeling see when we talk of feeling of love what is that feeling of love what do we say it is what is hmm. it ah, i am connected to ah, i am related to everybody ha huh. hmm. everybody every hmm. unit every I single am, unit yeah, every. in this system now mm -hmm. this includes nature it includes you know every unit mm -hmm. so this includes animals birds plants everything mm -hmm. so when i see my relatedness with them 
I am not going to see for a human being. If I want to, you know, uh, express my feeling, I may go talk to them. I may hmm. do something. You know, I may uh, gesture with my body. Now, when it comes to the plant, I have feeling for the plant. What will I do? I will try to ensure its innateness, its inheritance. Mm -hmm. I will try to protect its species. No, that's what I will do. Mm. So this is what we are doing. The expression is different, but the feeling can be there, isn't it? When it comes to another self, now there are specifically, you know, you have reciprocation from the other self also. Now there is involvement of choice from the other side also, isn't it? You have to see all that. But when it comes to the nature, nature. Everything is already definite in nature. You don't have to correct anything there. You just have to understand it, isn't it? Hmm. You just have to see your participation. What is my role with this unit? To be able to do that, I must understand it properly. The feeling is there. Feeling of being related to every unit in this existence just means that. That I see my relationship, and accordingly, I take care of it. So I can say I love plants, and I really, you know, enjoy being with plants and this and that. But if I'm destroying plants, then it may it has no meaning. No, see, the expression will always be different between human beings and other uh, order. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean to have the right feeling? That we can reflect on a little bit. Anyway, now we are out of time also. But you can reflect on this. Mm -hmm. We can talk some other time. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks. So we'll stop here. We will reflect on all these issues that we've talked about, and tomorrow we'll go on with the new lecture. So now we'll stop here.